Okay, as for a switching device that we can use to control this charger, um, this is one which I use uh, a few of these. Um, this one I bought from Amazon. I believe I got two of them for about uh, £14, so about £7 each. Uh, they're available on eBay and various places. It's uh, a very simple module, um, basically live and neutral in and a live and neutral out which is switched. Uh, it can work with your phone app going up to the cloud using their software which they call eWe Link. Uh, as you see there it's available on the App Store, Google Play, um, does remote control, time schedules, uh, you can share the device with your partner so both of you can switch it on and off if you two of you drive in the car. I have no idea. <laughs> um, I understand it's also uh, programmable via um, Amazon Alexa and Google Assist and a few other systems out there for home automation. Uh, so I suppose you could set this up to just command your car to start on, uh, on word of mouth from when you walk into the house. Um, yeah, anybody doing that, let me know. It's uh, something I've certainly not looked at. I must admit I tend to take these devices, take them apart and I, I reprogram with a different program to work on my home automation system. But, uh, so that's, that's the device we're going to be using to change um, at the moment. Also, there is another device available. Um, this device here, um, this is one that I've ordered off of eBay, it's come from China. It's basically exactly the same as the device in the box. It does the same things. It works with the same software. The only difference on this board is you, you see the very large blue relay there. If we turn the board to the back, this is what we call a no volt relay. There is no electrical connection on that relay. Uh, so that relay is safe to put into your pilot line. And if you're gonna control your charge via the pilot line, that is an ideal board for doing it using the, the same methods that we're, we're going to use. Um, this board also takes, if we, we turn that around, you can see it takes 5 volts and ground in. So this board requires a 5 volt supply. Now that can come from a variety of rain ways. You can probably find you've got a 5 volt signal uh, on your controller board if it's a uh, another unit um, but if like our Rolex where we haven't got that 5 volt signal obviously we're better to use the other board but just showing this as an option that these boards are available um, you'd have to provide it with a 5 volt power source which could come from an old phone charger or just a small uh, power supply connected across the mains in the charger um, yeah it's another way of doing it um, but we're, we're going to go the simple route uh, and we're going to use the other one on this, this machine. But uh, that from China, I think, costs me around about £5 for that board. Uh, and again, it uses the same software, which is freely available. Uh, so you can see this can be done at uh, quite a cost saving. And now the other, only other thing that I want to show is when you come to program these units up, I tend to do this, I, I put a, a lead onto a socket into the unit, so we've got this unit ready to go and program. Uh, we'll take that downstairs next to the, uh, the Wi-Fi router and we do it very close to the Wi-Fi router because this software can be a li little bit finicky, it likes to be very close and a very strong signal to the router so it picks up the correct, uh, the correct uh, router. Uh, passwords and signals so we'll go and program this up and then we'll bring it back once it's programmed and we'll fit it into this panel okay guys well we've programmed up our sun off switch we've gone close to our router and we've programmed it as the instructions and we've proved that it will switch on and off and we can hear the relay clicking now the next exercise is to fit that in there and the two wires which we want to connect into will be this brown and this blue. So we're just going to connect the two wires here as inputs and the outputs will carry on to there. So basically we're going to cut these wires, both of them, sort of in the middle. Sorry. 
connect that one and cut that one we're going to cut both of those and we're going to put our switch into here somewhere and uh, we'll see if we can perhaps use a, a tie wrap just to hold him somewhere safe we'll have a look uh, i'll probably just drop this breaker out of the way so that we can uh, we can see or maybe we can just fit it onto here with a tie wrap uh, i think it will go in there and cause no problems so uh, if we get them in there like that so we'll get that done and uh, we'll get back to you once we've done it you i'm sure you don't want to all sit here watching me do the bits so uh, we'll get back to you in a minute cheers okay i'm going to bring you back to this uh, while it's still easy to see okay you'll see here we've got neutral and live on the input so we've cut, cut our brown wire coming from our breaker and this is going into our live terminal and the neutral we've cut and we've taken into the neutral and the other side on the outputs we've taken the brown wire from our live the blue wire from a neutral and they go to the same places as they did before onto the control module down here um, yet those with good eyesight will notice that the blue wire has changed it wasn't long enough so I've had to add a little bit but again it's uh, that while although thinner is rated for the voltage we're using and the current is going to be very low going into that module uh, it's only milliamps it doesn't take a lot of power at all now uh, I just sort of brought you to show you that before I put these end covers on and then I'm going to uh, put this module up here with a tie wrap so it's just held just nicely out of the way and once I've done that I shall bring you back ready for some testing okay then right well we're back with the Rolex charger um we can see that uh, it's actually powered up at the moment we've got our new sun off switch device installed uh, it's powered up the module is not switched on if we look at my other phone uh, as yeah i've changed phones <laughs> uh, you can see it's actually ev charger is switched off so we're not actually asking for it to work uh, we look at the scope we're at zero volts the uh, car simulator is on, all ready to charge, saying, yep, give me power. So, basically, uh, we can turn it on. And I don't know if you heard the click, but straight away it's powered up the module. We've got our, our 12 volts, and the module is just doing its self-tests. And that's our time charge, which has just started. Uh, now that should also wake up the MG because as you see we're bringing our 12 volts up from uh, 0 to 12 volts uh, and then we're sending it the pulse width to wake it all up so that should also wake up the MG quite simple um, does that give a, an old charger a new uh, lease of life a very simple way of getting time control inexpensive um, I think that module is about £7 and the website that you can use is all free there's no charge for that and uh, as, you, as you see I'll try and do this you can see it there so we've turned it off and it's pretty damn instant and I say that is going through my Wi-Fi network and if we bring him back on you'll see the 12 volt has gone up and the module is just cycling through all its tests uh, and in a moment it will power up and there you go we're now charging again so um, I hope you found that interesting and, and useful uh, we're probably going to do a, a little bit more with this unit um, I say this is a dumb charger which we've sort of made timed um, there are other chargers out there which are giving problems and uh, there are other solutions uh, sorry there are other solutions for those um, which I tend to like to to break this wire here uh, because we can leave all their circuit board and control board uh, working I personally would prefer to leave this actually powered up uh, on equipment which is outside I, uh, I'm a great believer if you leave circuits powered up 
I think they tend to last longer than switching them on and off all the time but again in this it's easy to fit a mains control module to do what we're doing here um, then fit a module on this side which I could do but then I need to get a, a 5 volt supply and uh, we could run another board so I'll pop back in a moment and show you the other board that we could fit okay this is another little board this I believe is about five pound off eBay come from China uh, yeah Wi-Fi it's a sun off switch it's exactly the same setup as this it will do the same things uh, about five pound from China it looks reasonably made there's good clearance on the contacts and it is what we call a volt free contact i.e. there is no mains or no power connected to these contacts and you, you've got your, your common connection in the middle normally open and normally closed on these pins here now uh, basically we could fit that board we could cut that one wire one wire would go into the common and the other wire would go into the normally open and we would need to provide the switch with 5 volts here from a, a small separate power supply or if you've got a uh, uh, a unit which is a smart charger or a different unit with a different circuit board that you can get 5 volts you could put that in and that would allow you to do time control the same um, but to be honest I think most of the chargers we're going to find are going to be this style as a dumb charger and so the the mains module would be a, a much easier and a simpler solution uh, one of the other boards which i've got which if if people want me to i could show you how to connect <laughs> this is what my i call my mg wake up board this is my little um well it's my initial prototype board for waking up the mg um yeah this is designed to be fed with 12 volts it's a little uh, Arduino Uno on the bottom and this can go into the bottom here it breaks this wire it has a connection to earth and it needs a 12 volt supply which you can get mainly off of your other boards on your smart chargers and this will sit here and what it will do is it will look at this pulse width signal and its whole job in life is to look and when it sees that we've got 9 volts and we've got a pulse width if it doesn't see this voltage drop to 6 volts within 10 seconds it just does the simple task of turning this off to 0 volts and switching it back on again and that is a sufficient to wake up the MG and tell it to charge and as long as the board can see that that signal is as we've got there that we've got a 6 volt peak and it goes down to minus 15 and we've got the pulse width that board will sit there and let the car charge and do absolutely nothing um, but if it detects that we've suddenly got this signal and the car hasn't responded it will just jump in and it will do its reset on this 12 volt line and it will wake up the MG and your charge will then start um, whether you're on Argyle or whatever you're doing if, you, if your charger has asked the car to charge and the cars fell asleep and as I say this little board wired into that one wire with a supply will wake it up and it's quite simple um, yeah if there's interest I've got a much smaller board uh, using a Arduino Nano and I was looking at getting a, a smaller board made to just make it a lot smaller uh, if anybody wants it um, it seems pointless for me to make them I know they work I, I know it's there I know the software works I've been using it now myself for over a month and a few of my friends are using it with no problem at all it doesn't affect any other car you put in I say the only time it actually does anything is if it realizes that the car hasn't responded no wait enough from me uh, there we go you can see it all working I hope that's useful to somebody if there's any questions, uh, just give me a shout on the group. Cheers.